Lay yields back. I'll now go to Mr. Fluger from Texas for five minutes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'm proud to sponsor the uh, the bill that would push back on the administration. Let me read you a quote from September 6, 2019. Kiddo, I want you to look at my eyes. I guarantee you, I guarantee you, we're going to end fossil fuels. That was candidate Joe Biden. And to hear my colleagues on the other side of the aisle say this is not a ban, give me a break. The administration has used every, every weapon available for three years. And this is the latest, but this is the most egregious. Let's talk about the impact. And by the way, uh, for a Democrat witness, I do agree it is measured. I actually say it's calculated. It's very calculated. This decision is very calculated. So let's just talk about the impact of what this will do to not only our domestic production, our country, our economy, but to the geopolitical scene. And I'll start with Mr. Rice. Thank you for your testimony today. Uh, has time been used as a weapon both previously and is this another use of that? And what's the impact to EQT? What's the impact to your buyers? Tell us the story that you're facing. Yeah, I mean, this is the playbook. It's a uh, delay, introduce uncertainty, um, and the, the playbook has been proven to be incredibly impactful and incredibly effective. Pipeline cancellations are probably one of the most destructive forces that are causing energy prices to be extremely erratic. And unfortunately, we're starting to see the beginning of that playbook on the LNG uh, industry. Um, for Mr. McCown, um, talk about the, the geopolitical impacts. What, how does this affect our national security? And by the way, it's been said that this doesn't impact uh, um, FTA countries. Well, there's 195 plus countries in the world and only 14 of them are FTA. So let's just make that point that that's 7% of the countries. And the rest of them, and I'll get to a question from Ms. Gianetti, but talk just about geopolitical and, and national security impacts. Yeah, well, it undermines that. I mean, it undermines American credibility, uh, both from a reassurances that were just recently given to countries, but more importantly than that, um, it potentially deprives our allies and friends of fuel sources they need for their own energy security. And if I may, real quickly, this, we study things to death, right? That's how you get rid of things. And so fool me once, fool me twice, KXL, DAPL, MVP. It's a little hard to take the administration at its word right now. I take them at their word when President Biden, before he was president, said he was going to kill fossil fuels. That's exactly what he intended to do. And this is the playbook. I'll talk to Mr. Cormier. Um, it's been mentioned, uh, environmental justice, some of the uh, colleagues on the other side of the aisle talked about it, but uh, they have concerns there. What's your perspective on what uh, LNG and what the uh, opportunities in some of these export facilities and plants, um, you know, like the Commonwealth uh, uh, Project has for your community? When you look at the FERC map, and this is something I think is very important, that's why I would love to have our agency host a committee. These LNG plants or LNG facilities are not anywhere near folks that are spoken of as being impacted. I'm from what you would call North Lake Charles, which is the urban part of Lake Charles, born and raised there. There's no industrial facility anywhere, anywhere in our community. These facilities are on the coast, granted, Cameron Parish, what Cameron has, you have 230 people in Cameron proper. Cameron is a very small place, very important place, historically part of Louisiana's culture. Hackberry has about 1,000 folks where Cameron LNG is at. Chenier, right across you have Port Arthur, right over, over the Sabine River. These impacts that we're talking about, especially when it comes to these, the, the populations that's being focused on, it's not in their backyard. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Ms. Giannetti, what percentage of the Louisiana grid is serviced by LNG? What percentage of the Louisiana? Electrical grid. I do not know the answer 50 to that. plus percent. So these are the people that we're worried about. All of us are worried about. So um, what I want to ask you is if the law says that they must approve, as your testimony states, why is DOE stalling? We go from a a 90-day approval process during the Obama administration to an average of 60 days during the Trump administration to an average of 365-plus days during this administration. But yet you say that 
that they must approve, as your testimony states, why are they stalling? What I said, Congressman, is that DOE is required to approve FTA authorizations. It is not only within its right, but it's actually in the legal requirement for it to do a public interest assessment for NFTA. I think what we know is what candidate Biden said was he wanted to kill fossil fuels, and he's making good on that promise. And we are gonna stand in the gap to push back on a really egregious bad decision. That's why I'm proud to sponsor 7176, to push back on this administration and to strengthen our country's energy security because we know it's national security. Mr. Chairman, I yield back.